All right, folks. Today we're going to be talking about MetaZoo. One of a, well, it was one of a more recent TCG, I'd like to call it, a trading card game released in like the last five years. Um, today, they have gotten the very sad news that they are closing their doors at the MetaZoo studio. They will no longer be producing sets or anything. Uh, goodbye. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened, right? A lot of people are trying, are, are curious about what happened to this game. The last time we ended up talking about MetaZoo was on release. Uh, we we waited a few months and we actually talked about it on the stream. I was really, really curious about like the, the hype around MetaZoo in particular. Um, released right at around the 2019 era, right before COVID. Um, it was feeling like it was prime time to, to hop off as one of the bigger trading card games. Because that was right about the time where uh, 2020 happened. Everybody remembered TCGs exploded. And uh, investing into trading card games uh, was feeling more like a real thing to average people. It felt like something that everybody could get involved into, and a lot of place, a lot of prices inflated. Uh, we saw a boom like we had pretty much never seen before in the TCG era. Mostly as of now, speaking 2024, everything has fallen back into place where it was before. We haven't seen many super, increasingly like crazy highs since the 2020 era everything's been kind of died back down into its uh where where it kind of started right maybe a little bit bigger for better or for worse after 2020 um but the last time we ended up talking about metazoo was we discussed it on the channel when they were undergoing a whole bunch of drama for implementing an nft structure into their game keep in mind again 2020 a lot of things came out of 2020 one of those sad things was uh non-fungible tokens and it felt like anybody and anybody had a reason to print an NFT and uh, make money off of it or invest into these non-fungible tokens. We learned later on down the line, I think most people that could look at it, that NFTs was on the greater scope a, sh a sham and objectively really was worth nothing. I prefer my tokens fungible. I think most people do. I think looking back on it, we can actually look back and say that all those, that, all, that whole era was just a sham in general. Um, and unfortunately, MetaZoo was one of the companies that ended up getting caught up in that. Um, along with the hype, they decided to implement some NFT ideas to their game uh, and tried to tie them to the physical TCG. Uh, whether it be like you can get an NFT version of a card and then that card is printed specifically for you. Uh, they tried to find ways to bridge that uh, gap between NFTs, which was objectively a lot of people would think is the future of collectibles, is, is, is in those non-fungible tokens, to the current day trading card game uh, and all the hype that was already surrounding it. It sounded stupid back in the day. It still sounds stupid today. And if you guys have been a part of the stream, we laugh at things like, um, I can't even remember what the name of it. What's the, what's the NFT project that everybody laughs at for Yu-Gi-Oh now? I can't even remember it. That's how bad it is. Somebody in chat's got to know. I, I can't remember. It's the one that like, <laughs> like sells the Hani thing or whatever, bro. What's what's the what's the website that tries to sell Hani NFTs and Chris LeBlanc NFTs? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? What the fuck is this thing called? I know what you're talking about. I there's no way I'm the only person that knows about this, bro. TCG fandom. Holy fuck, bro. I can't believe I forgot about this. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't. I, I This is the, the website I was talking about. This is like something that's debuted in the last year. Uh, TCG fandom is like the, the Yu-Gi-Oh! NFT marketplace or whatever like that. Total sham. Total waste of your money. If you buy this, I'm sorry. You are a bozo. You probably don't deserve to have a checkbook. Um, yeah. So looking back on it, we can look and say like, obviously this was a grift back in the day, but uh, I'm assuming people back then didn't just have brain cells or something like that. Um, so yeah, the whole NFT thing, MetaZoo ended up getting caught up in it. And I have no doubt that during the hype, they made a lot of money. There was a lot of people that were like really, really in, uh, invested and interested in the crossover between TCG and NFTs. Um, and sure, it is going to be a niche of a niche, but that niche of a niche of people have very heavy pockets in the crypto world. Uh, so a lot of people were getting involved in it and stuff like that. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I think that's one of the things that sent the game like 
over the edge. Uh, a lot of people were really, really not for the NFTs. Uh, you talk to any collectible or any car player that plays trading card games. Uh, these people in particular, like myself, anybody that plays TCGs, have very strong opinions about NFTs. That was true back in the day as well, right? Because we have physical items that we can hold that are essentially the same thing. Like, we know how a physical item can like retain value and stuff like that. To try to pitch the idea of having a strictly digital version seemed almost stupid, especially to talking to trading card game people. So obviously uh, there was a huge divide I mean, between people that liked it and people that didn't. And when MetaZoo had adopted it, it essentially like caused this max exodus of a lot of people voicing their opinions. Hey, we do not like this NFT thing. We weren't fans of it. We're really disappointed. This is the direction you're taking the game. And a lot of people had left the game from there. That's the last time we ended up discussing about it. We discussed the different partnerships uh, with MetaZoo uh, and how Michael Waddell, who is the owner, uh, the CEO of MetaZoo, I, I think looking back on it, I, I think he had some great ideas and I think he genuinely wanted his game to be a success, but I think he got involved with the wrong people and maybe it made him very popular in the moment or maybe it made him very, very wealthy in the time period. But in the, wrong, in the long run, you see the consequences of trying to ride hype trains like that. So MetaZoo, as of today, literally today, uh, released an announcement that they're closing uh, their doors effective immediately. There's no more products lined up for the future, no more collaborations. Um, they're just shutting down shop, right? Here's the, uh, the thing that Michael Waddell ended up releasing. He says, it is with a heavy heart that I must announce effective immediately that MetaZoo Games will be closing and shutting down all operations. I want to, uh, yo, uh, Dar Darumaka, thanks for the raid, bro. I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone in the community for the incredible four-year run that we had. MetaZoo Games was started during the pandemic and provided a home and created a culture that revitalized the TCG industry, launching a new wave of card games that now numbers in the hundreds. I'm proud to have been a part of that, and you should be too. Unfortunately, that era has passed and faced with logistical and product gridlocks. MetaZoo Games can no longer continue to exist in the current economic and collectible markets. It is my hope that MetaZoo can continue on as an IP at some point in the future under new ownership, and I look forward to that day. Special thanks to all MetaZoo artists and staff, both present, past, and future. Well, present, not future. See ya, bro. <laughs> that made these past four years possible. The memories we created will be something we cherish for the rest of our lives. More information will follow and be communicated via our Discord channel when it becomes available. Thanks, everyone. Once again, Michael Waddell. Kind of a sad little note. Uh, a lot of people were making fun of this, too, because he has, like, some... some. I think he's just kind of reminiscing, talking about how he revitalized the TCG industry, launching a new wave of card games that now number in the hundred. Um, I mean, MetaZoo, I, like I said, it was released at a time where the trading card game industry had never seen such a boom, right? It felt like anything that was anything could uh, succeed, right? Like, as long as it was, as long as it had four corners and it was printed on cardboard, you could make millions. It felt like nobody could do anything wrong. MetaZoo was one of the more, I want to say, popular ones that released during that era. I think nowadays we're finally starting to experience the the fatigue setting in from all that and in the, in the big boom before. A lot of people that have hopped into guard games have fallen out. And that's why I said everything has kind of rescinded back to where it was, right? All these, like, fourth-tier card games and stuff like that that would have, like, small player bases now just can't get a tournament running. It just doesn't happen anymore, right? Like, if you're outside of the big three, all of a sudden, like, unless you're one piece, you're not doing the greatest. Um, yeah, so a lot of people made fun of them for, like, insinuating that MetaZoo in particular revitalized the TCG, which is just not true. Uh, I think they had, like, a great idea, and I think Michael Waddell had... Genuine fun creating his game, but like I said, he fell into the wrong partnerships, and it caused it to uh, to go under there. Now, the funny thing is, is like reading this, it's like kind of like sad, right? You're like, damn, like, that's really rough. But like, this comes as a surprise to, I want to say, everybody. Because not like two weeks earlier, Michael Waddell released an entire, uh, released a, a note to the community addressing the plans for the next year. And it sounds like from reading this, this was released, what, December 15th, right? Okay, maybe like, it was like about like a month ago. But like a month ago, he released this entire plan for 2024. And it looked grim, but on the same point, it looked optimistic. They like recognized a lot of the problems that I had run into, which I'll talk to you guys about, um, and reasons they were like falling behind. And they, Michael Waddell in particular, who wrote this, uh, uh, pledged to do better 
moving forward in 2044 to, to rectify all these problems that they were running into. So it's really, really strange to come from reading something like this, which we'll pick up a couple things off of. I'll read them to you guys uh, to go directly to, yeah, we're just completely shits hit the fan. We can't do this anymore. But what caused them to get to this point, right? Some of the things that were uh, main problems is pre-orders in particular. MetaZoo has always struggled with it. That's one of the first things addressed in here. Um, pre-orders are really, really bad for MetaZoo. They've always been in a poor spot. And it's due to nobody's fault but their own. One of the main things that would happen is MetaZoo loves to partner with companies. Uh, you see a lot of like different like cryptid community things that they partner with and even just even larger scale uh, collaborations. One of the more recent collaborations they did was actually with Hello Kitty, which was also one of the more big reasons that they ended up failing. We'll talk about later. Um, but they take on all these collaborations with these big companies. And as soon as they take that on, they have to sign contracts to get these products out at a certain time. Sometimes these collaborations require a little bit more of a priority, right? They, they say, hey, we need this printing schedule moved up to meet our demands so we can link up and do something. So MetaZoo has to take the hit and switch around the products they're, they're um, currently printing or have planned to print to uh, accommodate these different uh, collaborations. For example, when Hello Kitty got announced that they're having a collaboration with them, they had to take the set that they were releasing uh, that was going to be like a December time or something like that, and they had to push it back almost indefinitely. So anybody that had ordered their product and gotten a promised date, 90% of the time, MetaZoo would not deliver on that date. They would always be pushing their stuff back to accommodate for other stuff. And that's the one thing that's been um, established in here under the, the collaboration thing. They said, like, we have to keep pushing our production uh, to accommodate for these. So what they're going to do in the future, or what they were going to do presumably, is they were going to put the earnest of producing the cards onto whatever company they're um, collaborating with rather than freeing up their own printers to do it, which I think hosts a whole different like suite of problems. Like I don't understand how you can say like, okay, Hello Kitty, like you can print something with the MetaZoo name, but you got to do everything with it. Like, that's obviously going to run into problems with, like, card quality and stuff like that. Like, are you sure they're going through your same distributors and everything? Like, you're going to run into problems with that, how things are packaged, how things are, like, made. Like, uh, I, this didn't make too much sense because looking at it from me, I would think it opens up a whole bunch of new problems. But that was the direction they were planning on doing. They're saying, hey, we're going to focus on printing our sets that we have planned in mind and getting these pre-orders out on time. Because that has been something that everybody has been complaining for for the last few months, even years. And we need to rectify that. So they were going to take a backseat on the collaborations to sort that on themselves. Good on them. Great idea, right? That's all this stuff here, right? They're talking about core sets, how, hey, we've we've failed to get these out on time. We're going to be changing it. We're going to be guaranteeing our delivery to distributors two to three weeks ahead, making sure the product's in your hands on time and everything like that. That's what they said. Something else they talked about was competitive play. I've looked at competitive play for MetaZoo for a lot because I've been trying to figure out who the fuck plays this game. And, and the only thing that I've ever come to was it was Yu-Gi-Oh players that just wanted to make money. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all it was. It's like the people that would play in these tournaments that were hosted by MetaZoo were the people that knew they could win, and they were mostly people from other card games and stuff like that, which that part's not surprising, right? People like that play card games probably come from other card games. Um, so they were talking about like how they wanted to do a whole bunch in 2023 for the Casters Cup, but it fell through due to logistical reasons. Uh, I'm pretty sure they just dropped a whole bunch of tournaments from their schedule um, because they probably wouldn't get the attendance to actually do anything with them. Um, it's also important to note that the majority of these tournaments that are hosted either through the Caster Cups, which is the, the, the MetaZoo team themselves, or uh, third party hosted through other tournaments. Um, what was I just saying, bro? It's, it's important to note that um, the prizing comes from MetaZoo. They'll back like a third party uh, tournament or something like that, and they'll say, we'll offer this amount of prizing um, if you host the tournament and stuff like that. So what did they decide to do? Uh, it's very expensive and stuff. But they decided to say that for 2024, uh, they're not going to put a lot of time into releasing a big event for the year. They're going to be doing smaller cash and product pricing until the Towers and Cust Casters Cup can be justified. They essentially said, we're backing down from competitive play. We're going to let it be just more of a local scene thing. And we'll run small cash and things until we can see the player count rise, which 
I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if you're at the point where you're saying we can't justify competitive tournaments, there will not be a time in the future where you will be able to justify competitive tournaments. <laughs> you will continuously lose players, and then you will never be able to host a tournament again. So this was already like the beginning of it and reading it here. And it also goes into uh, events. They talk about what they want to do for events. Like since they're not holding these tournaments, what are they doing, right? Uh, they decided to step away more from Comic Cons and stuff. And they said they wanted to get more involved with the cryptid community. I read this originally and I was already dead confused. Like that's obviously what their game's based around is all these cryptids. But I would venture to say that the majority of like MetaZoo fans aren't just cryptid nerds. Like, they're, they're, they're trading card game people. And it sounds like from reading this paragraph in particular here, which I'll, I'll just read it to you, MetaZoo has, mystically, hersti, blah, 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 MetaZoo has historically run some pretty amazing events at conventions. In the last several Comic-Cons we've attended, MetaZoo has always been the largest line to support from the community. That being said, while we view the importance of these events from a marketing standpoint, in 2024, we would prefer to focus our attention on both events that support players and build bridges to the cryptid community. For this reason, our primary event-driven focus for 2024 will be a vending collecticons, as well as various cryptid-related events, festivals, and conventions around the U.S. Yeah, so like reading this, obviously, you're going to get a little deferred. You're going to be like, okay, so they're just attending the the same like collecticons that they have. Like, who's th th this isn't going to be able to expand the the general player base. I don't know. If you were to read this article, uh, this this letter, by this point, you should like completely like throw away the entire idea of competitive meta zoo like play. Like it really feels like like at this point they're just trying to make the product a collectible. And if you genuinely want to ask, I I don't think they've done a great job of doing that, right? So to completely pivot and say like this is what we're going to be focusing on, like it already feels like the beginning of the end. Uh, they had a partner program where they uh would hook up with a whole bunch of, like, um, channels to, like, I think they would give them discounts on product if they bought a whole bunch of them. Uh, and so, like, essentially your favorite YouTuber would be your distributor for your product and stuff like that. Uh, they decided to discontinue that. Not a whole lot with that, though. The people that were selected were just, like, the greatest MetaZoo vans and stuff like that. I know some people probably lost a lot of money on that, being like that, that... They get boxes at a discount, but if you can't sell the boxes, you're literally sitting on it anyways, right? This note actually came out, too. It was so funny. Uh, this note came out, and if you already... Again, another reason. They discontinued the Discord, too. They had an entire Discord community, which was a couple thousand players. I would dare to venture that it's not... MetaZoo isn't popular on Reddit. It's not popular on the like on, on their websites and stuff like that. There's no forums. I think Discord, the 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 MetaZoo Discord community was the place to discuss the game. And they January first at the beginning of this month, they they closed it. They closed down the entire MetaZoo Discord. They said, "Well, we're gonna open up a new one or something like that. We're gonna find a way to get you guys more information." Uh, I think they wanted to try to make it less of like a community page and more just of like a news drop, right? Like we'll use this uh, discord to give you guys news drops on new product and stuff like that. I don't even know why they would bother doing less. Like this was released. And like you said, you see all these plans for 2024 are like an essential roadmap. And then you see that the discord's closing. And I don't know, like if I'm a player of the game, like guys, don't you feel like that sets off a lot of red flags? Like why is the place to discuss my favorite game just evaporating? Like, what do you guys think? If you heard if you heard from your favorite card game, if Konami said, guys, we have the craziest plans for 2024. You guys are going to have your socks knocked off with how good our products are for the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game in the 2024 year. However, we're taking down our website. I, we, we, we just we, we can't keep the website up anymore, guys. We'll, we'll find a different way to get you guys your new, but we'll, we'll take it down. Like, I'd be a little bit confused, at least, right? I'd be confused, right? Konami's website's bad and he's, all right, relax. But <laughs> I would be confused at the least. If I'm MetaZoo, though, I'm in a panic mode. So, yeah, they shut down the entire Discord. Um, so, obviously, not a lot of places to talk about the game, right? Uh, yeah, that odd, oddly enough, that didn't cause a lot of people to panic or a lot of people to be worried. Um which surprises me, but yeah, eventually the Discord ended up closing, and then 
just a couple weeks later, we ended up getting the, uh, the announcement of the game's closing, right? So what happened? What was, like, the actual end of the game? What would cause this entire thing to fall? If you've been around, we talked about it before, and it, it was always a question of who really actually plays this. And it's not a, obviously a very popular game. A lot of people don't play it. So it's one of those things. It's like it's like the long John Silvers of trading card games, right? It's the, that thing you were always looking at, and you're like, why is that still on store shelves? Who's buying this? Who's eating butterfly shrimp at long john silvers who's the one person keeping this alive right <laughs> that was it was always the game that you would look at and you'd be like why the fuck is this still around right uh yeah i don't think they were ever doing particularly fantastic but i uh, you see it with like mmos and stuff right like as long as there's a super small extremely dedicated community like it'll keep a game afloat and i imagine that's what metazoo was under for a long time just like a lot of really dedicated or heavily invested players uh, just trying to hold on to keeping the game alive, right? And it was able to stay around for, uh, I'll say it, longer than I gave it, right? I thought this uh, this game was going to die within like a year, year and a half, but nah. Force of Will? Yeah, Force of Will is like a game, right? Force of Will is a game that you look at and literally nobody plays that fucking thing anymore. But but you're like, how is it still around? Who's who's still buying this shit, right? Yeah. So pretty pretty sad that it ended up uh, going away after this. Uh, I do think Michael Waddell really wanted his game to succeed, and unfortunately, this is just a tale to look at and say like, you got to make the right partnerships to make your game succeed. I like how the MetaZoo was during the COVID era looked at as one of those investment things, right? And now look at your investment portfolio ruined, bro. You're broke. <laughs> you're broke <laughs> it's really sad i mean for what metazoo did like metazoo did have some tournaments that really caught the ire of a lot of like other trading card games right like they held, held these tournaments with like hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash prizing and it was one of those things you're like where did they get all this fucking money and it was from like crypto and stuff that was able to like fund these tournaments um and, like, these numbers were, like, real figures. Like, I remember looking at one of their first Texas tournaments that they held at, a, like, a Collecticon. And it was, like, a couple hundred thousand, at least, for prize support. Which is it, unheard of, right? Unheard of for especially a brand new card game. And also thinking of the card games we play now, right? Like, like it's even unheard of for most, most trading card games. Yu-Gi-Oh! I can't imagine getting, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yo, Joseph, what's up, bro? Thanks for the raid, man. Came in at the right time. We're talking about my favorite game, MetaZoo, bro. And it went under. We're actually getting into exactly, I, I want to say, that what happened, too. We already discussed, anybody that is from the MBT stream, we talked about uh, the letters, the two letters. Um, I'm imagining Joseph already told you about this one. This is the one on MetaZoo's closure. And I talked briefly about the one. We, were, we just went over uh, the one to the community uh, that was about a month ago. Uh, stating all the stuff that they had planned for the next year. Perfect timing? Yeah, I know. Came at the right time, bro. Uh, I'll, I'll briefly like give you guys like the TLDR of what we just discussed. Uh, this letter to the community was a month ago, and it was outlining all the problems they had faced and conceding like, hey, we got to do better for next year. But anyways, here's our plans for next year. A lot of them looked pretty grim. One of the things was they discussed events. They're not going to be holding many uh, tournament events anymore. They're going to be trying to focusing on smaller cash prizing and stuff. And they wanted to move the events that they attended to to more of cryptid conventions. You know, like Bigfoot conventions or Mothman conventions and stuff like that. For 2024, MetaZoo thought that that's where their main audience was. So... Uh, if you played the trading card game at all, or if you like were interested in it, you were probably already getting some red flags. On top of that, they discontinued their partner grant program, and they shut down their Discord, which we discussed very briefly, was the main way to discuss MetaZoo, was through their Discord. They had shut down the Discord, and they said, we'll find a different way to get you guys your information. What I heard was they were going to do like another Discord, but it wasn't going to be like a forum. It was going to be just an announcement page, where they just splatter announcements when they go up. So, yeah, you're looking at it. It's not in a great spot, right? Sorry, MetaZoo. It's not looking good. Bro. Yeah, it's kind of upsetting. Where was I going to go with it? I, I had something else that I wanted to talk about with Meta MetaZoo. Yeah, the tournaments had, like, um insane prize support and stuff like that. Really caught the ire of the community, and it's really upsetting that this was, like, uh, the way to, like, let it go. 
Uh, so what ended up causing the failure of MetaZoo, right? There was a lot of things like, like a, a lot of people would invest in boxes. And for the most part, I wouldn't say it was a good investment. It was very hard to flip product towards the later stages of it. Uh, like I said, a lot of people would get their product through uh, either like people from the, the, the creator community um, being a part of the partner program and stuff. Yo, Ray Ime, thanks for the tier one. Welcome back. People would get their product through these these way. Uh, and they had one disaster in December. A literal disaster for product. And I want everybody in the chat, think about how you would feel if this happened to you, okay? And then, and then this is how everybody felt. Okay, so what ended up happening, right? MetaZoo ended up releasing a, a, a collaboration. Like I said, they do collaborations all the fucking time, right? It's not anything new. They do some wacky ones here and there. They announced one for Hello Kitty, bro. They were going to do one with Hello Kitty. This is MetaZoo X and Rio Collector Box. This was going to debut. It was a double booster box set with some promos, and it was going to retail at three hundred dollars. It was going to be three hundred dollars. People could buy it for pre-sale for like two fifty. You would buy it for pre-order as you would normally, right? Anybody that uh, who's pre-ordered product before? Anybody in chat? Let me know now. Who has pre-ordered a Yu-Gi-Oh box before? Did you get a deal? You saved a couple of bucks, right? Not a significant amount. I'd imagine maybe like 10 maybe if you're lucky, $15 on a product. You save some money. It's worth it to pre-order, right? Saves like 10 bucks. Exactly. It's not a lot, but you end up saving some money, right? So what they announced is they said, hey, guys, we're releasing this set uh, with Hello Kitty. It's going to be a fucking banger. These are going to be $300 US retail. You can pre-order it for a little bit cheaper. Probably like 250 or something like that if you're trying to flip them or something like that. Well... The day of release, like I like I, I think I think a day or two days later or something like that, we all know TCG players are part of eBay now. Look what you could find on eBay. Look what you could still find on eBay. Official partnership with TCG player and eBay, they cut the price in half to $150. Keep in mind this is like two, three days after the official release of the set. So anybody that pre-ordered this product, they said, anyways. Fuck you, bro. They, they said, anyways, get shit on, nerd. And everyone that had pre-ordered this product literally got roasted. Yeah, this is official stock. They had like about 7,000 boxes or something like that. They still have a significant amount at the discounted price. They cannot get rid of it. They cannot get rid of it. So they're stuck with all this product, and what ended up happening is these boxes, which was objectively you would be getting a deal if you spent 300 right? Like the boxes be like a couple hundred each or something like that. If you take this box price of 150 and discount all the boxes out of it, the boxes are $75 each, which was the cheapest you could get a MetaZoo booster box <laughs> because of the way they, they did this sale. They literally scammed everyone that had pre-ordered product, and everyone was left fumbling the bag. So obviously after this huge sale has gone, right? This is front page on TCG Player eBay. They're saying, hey, we have all this shit that we can't get rid of. The entire MetaZoo community, their faith in like investments or anything in the future is destroyed at that point, right? Like this is the first time this happened, but hey, if you're in the, the, the community after seeing something like that, it sure as hell will not be the last, right? So everybody's faith in like investment and pre-ordering product. Not only did they suffer all these problems before of not getting their pre-orders on time because of all these collaborations that would push sets back. Um, it was already unreliable at that point. And then if you get the product, like you still have to sell it, right? Like it doesn't matter when you get it. Who's to say like three months later, since you got the product late, that person's not going to want it anymore. Um, so already with problems on top of that, now with like the, the thing that they can just cut the product in half if they can't get rid of it and leave everybody else you know, fumbling the bag. Um, it sucks, right? So that was something that had just demolished everybody's faith in the game. Um, these weren't selling well at all either. They, they super overprinted it because they expected demand to go way better. Um, and now you can still get it for a, an extremely cheap price here, right? I think the booster boxes are almost at like 50 bucks or something like that, which is in, insulting. It's, it's not a, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So on top of that, being that it's not safe to buy your product anymore because, hey, it might show up on Amazon or eBay half the price a day later. They haven't played. They haven't paid out players for winning tournaments. You know how we talked about um, how third-party tournaments and stuff like that, they get money from the Caster Cup to be able to pay off their players. 
They haven't done that. They've been uh, giving people the runaround, bro. They've been telling people uh, that had won tournaments months ago uh, that they would get their payments by the end of December. That was after uh, that was in the apology letter that we just read. This first one here. This is this is essentially like apology letter. He said, "Hey, I fucked up. I'll get you the prizing by the end of December." It's the end of uh, January, and this prizing still has not been paid out. And now we have, <laughs> uh, now we have that MetaZoo's getting under. They're they're not they're they're leaving. There's a lot of people that are still owed money. I don't know how that's going to pan out. So, yeah, MetaZoo's not in a great spot. It hasn't been in a great spot, I'd say, like, ever, like, its entire, like, history, but especially now, um, we're seeing it go away. Lawsuit hype? <laughs> I don't know. You, you, I look back at Me- MetaZoo in the retrospect, and, like, if you guys were around for that stream or you ever saw that VOD where we went super in-depth talking about, like, when they first had partnered with NFTs and how, like, Steve Aoki, like, was one of the faces of MetaZoo, right? Everybody knows who Steve Aoki is, right? He's a okay DJ, I guess. But, like, the man probably never even fucking played the game. You could tell. And, yeah, he was, like, single-handedly responsible for putting it in NFT and stuff like that. What the heck is, NF- uh, what the heck is MetaZoo? It doesn't matter now. How did they ever have the money to even promise 50k for prizing? Uh, a lot of people think the money came from their non-fungible token sham that they did when that was around. They, at all things less, they did plan to do the NFT sham at the right time. It was during the NFT hype. I don't know. I don't doubt that they made tons of money off of crypto or something like that. They ended up doing a whole bunch of things with it in particular. Like they did some things where they they tried to tie it in with the card games, but also the MetaZoo. They did, like, a lot of stuff just on NFTs on their own. Like, not even related to the card game. And you gotta imagine some of the goobers that bought that stuff anyways. So, yeah. I mean, it's tough to see, right? Like, MetaZoo was one of those games that came out during the pandemic. Everyone thought it was gonna change TCGs or it was gonna be another one of those big ones. And uh, I hate to say it, but this is typically the story that you end up seeing. They just fall off, they go away, and they're never heard of again. Typically, they don't even get this much of a, a buzz, right? Like, a lot of people are talking about MetaZoo going under, but... I don't know. Most card games, you just don't really hear them. They kind of just fade away into silence. What do you guys think? Did you guys ever buy any MetaZoo product? Did you guys ever think of anything about MetaZoo? When's the first time you guys heard about MetaZoo? Did you ever, ever think about it? I have one little gift for you guys, too. If you look at our sub goal, we're close to it. If we can hit our sub goal for today... I have a MetaZoo product that I was able to get my hands on. Now an extreme collectible. This is my Smokey the Bear. Here, I'll pull you up. Hold on. This is my Smokey the Bear MetaZoo blister pack. It has packs of the wilderness in there. If you guys can help me get to my sub goal, we'll open this together. And I'll give away the Smokey the Bear promo to one of you guys. I'll send that to anywhere in the world. Somebody can own the Smokey the Bear promo. And then now, bro, now that this game's not even around anymore, you know that'll be worth millions. You know that'll be worth millions, bro. If we can hit the sub goal today. That's our goal today. Yeah. I'm curious to see what Michael Waddell does in the future, man. Hopefully he has like another good idea. Hopefully he meets with the right people next time. 